It is absolutely shocking, but not surprising that I have to do a video like this, if that even makes sense. You see, I, I word it like that because we are in the end times. A time of such massive delusion and deception that you really can't get a grasp on it mentally if you try to figure out why people think the way they think and why they do the things they do. It's nonsensical. There is much confusion. But today I'm going to be doing a video debunking those who are saying and calling and teaching that the Apostle Paul was somehow false. Now Paul wrote the majority of the epistles in the New Testament. I think most of us can agree on at least that. Um, the number, well, people will disagree on how many, and that really doesn't matter, at least for today's video. But I'm going to show you at least why I'm doing this video and how this came about. Yesterday I came across a video that was in my suggested uh, video feed on YouTube. This one right here, you can see the title, you can see the person, Hugh Whitmore, author. There he is. And uh, he says, Paul is a false apostle, and then he cries, hallelujah, praise God. Uh, what utter buffoonery. I listened to the video and his uh, reasoning or lack of there, and then I note that he's got a book to sell. But, uh, and I certainly don't recommend listening to it. Um, what he is, is sent from hell. And when you can come out here and decree that over half the New Testament is false, then we've got a problem. I'm going to take you over here to Second Peter. We're in chapter 3, and we're going to read what the Bible says about Paul. This is written by Peter, obviously. We're going to start in verse 14. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace, without spot, and blameless. And according that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you. This verse right here is loaded. Look what it, Peter says about the apostle Paul. Notice also that Peter never disputes that he's an apostle. But what Peter does say here is that Paul is beloved. He's loved. He says Paul is a brother. And he testifies that Paul has been given wisdom. Now, for all of you scholars out there, and, and trust me, you don't need to be a scholar to figure out where did this wisdom come from? I mean, this whole book is about Jesus and salvation. I'm talking about the New Testament books. But he testifies of Paul. He promotes Paul. He endorses Paul. He approves Paul. Why is this important? Well, Peter was handpicked by Jesus Christ. And here is Peter's witness to Paul. Now, do you still want to dispute this? I mean, you certainly don't have to prove it to me, but you will give an account on Judgment Day. He continues in verse 16, As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also other scriptures unto their own destruction. Another loaded verse. Look what Peter says here. In all his epistles, not a few, but in all his epistles, speaking uh, in them of things in which are some things hard to be understood. Hard to be understood to who? Well, here. They that are unlearned and unstable. They wrestle with these things, so much so as they do other scriptures. And what's the result? Well, their own destruction. This is almost prophetic. The wisdom given to Paul was beyond. And I can testify this having read the Bible, the New Testament, more times than I can count and being moved and shaken with tears and conviction, so on and so forth. 
So to sum this up, we've got, I'd say, a prophetic warning from Peter right here. Remembering that Peter was handpicked and approved of Jesus Christ, and Peter in turn approves biblically and in Scripture here, Paul the Apostle. If you don't want to be found in this category, I would warn you to stop promoting the lies that somehow Paul hijacked the gospel or that he's speaking something different. Because I'm here to testify that indeed he is not speaking anything different than what Jesus Christ would have him speak. This is scripture. Again, reminding you, Jesus Christ handpicked and approved Peter. Peter, in turn, approves of Paul and gives you absolute testimony of things that are happening. Those that don't understand the words of Paul are unlearned and unstable. And it even says other scriptures. And the result of this is their own destruction. What a warning. But you can be assured by the words of Peter that Paul indeed is legit. For clowns like Hugh Whitmore and all the others out there who are teaching that the Apostle Paul is false, uh, I have no reservations in uh, telling you that these men and women are sent from hell. It's that simple. Now, as I close this video out, I want to leave you with some perspective. Imagine a scenario playing out like this. Now, only imagine this happening. You're standing before Jesus Christ on Judgment Day, and Jesus is judging you for following and listening to a false apostle, in this case, Paul. Well, guess what? You would be absolved of all guilt in this matter, because you could answer Jesus and truthfully tell him, well, I was basing my decision to listen to these words of Paul on what uh, the Apostle Peter said as he endorsed and promoted and approved Paul in Holy Scripture. All this blame would very easily and rightfully fall upon Peter. So for the last 2,000 years, you've got billions of Christians 2,000 or so, you know, billions of Christians who have followed the teachings of Paul. And uh, somehow they got it all wrong. Uh, so all of these Christians for the last 2,000 or so years would be absolved also. See how dumb this is? And, and again, what would Peter say to this? Well, I don't know. I'll leave that to your imagination. But we know Peter was handpicked by Jesus. And I know I keep saying this ad nauseum, but it's true. So what a debacle, what a mess we would have. And then also consider the fact that somehow some of you think that God just wasn't powerful enough to just stop this wave of deception in many, many books of the New Testament where somehow this was false. What, what an absolute mess. And, and so you can, you can know that those who claim that Paul is false, are simply unlearned and unstable, and they're speaking these lies to their own destruction. Paul is legit, and the words that he spoke in his epistles are precious and true and according to Jesus Christ.